Hello and welcome to Helicopter Train Videos. In this short video, we're going to talk about hovering tips and tricks. This is a short clip from episode two of the Helicopter Training Podcast, How to Hover a Helicopter. And you can find that full episode in the description or on our YouTube channel's podcast tab. Okay, let's summarize some tips for learning or teaching hovering. Firstly, for students. Everyone finds it hard at first. You've got to give yourself time. It will come. And don't compare yourself to your classmates. And remember, even experienced pilots can get stressed when trying to hover in really challenging conditions. So avoid gusty and high wind days when you're trying to learn the basics of hovering. Now, as you get better, you obviously want to expand your, uh, your abilities with different winds, but uh, start off easy. Try to stay calm, relax, take a deep breath, avoid tensing up. Take a break if you're noticing that you're getting tense. Notice your hands. Are you death gripping? Are you death gripping the controls? Look outside. Look outside. Avoid staring inside the cockpit or down at the ground. Use a reference point or the horizon instead of fixating on something too close, and that will help you spot those small changes to attitude. Always, always, always clear your tail before turning. Like I said, use a relaxed grip on the cyclic to avoid over controlling. So rest your arm and just fly with your wrist and your fingers. It's smooth, tiny control inputs. Less is more. It's more pressure than large movements generally. And no matter how scared or frustrated, never let go of the controls until your instructor has them. Understand that there's delays in the system because of inertia. Recognize how the inputs can take a little time to affect the aircraft. Otherwise you get into this over-controlling oscillation. Understand the aerodynamics and the interrelated control effects. We've sort of talked a little bit about those. Remember, there's no perfect control position to solve the hover, to stop all movement. There's always going to be constant small corrections. The pedals. If you think you might be a person who might get the left and right mixed up a little bit from maybe prior experience running a track steer vehicle or something like that, say in your head, left goes left, right goes right to reinforce the proper input. Simulators, whether it's a full-on aviation train device or just a home PC or an Xbox, they can be harder because you have a lack of movement and you don't have the same depth perception, but they can be useful to work on the small movements and the general inputs. Or maybe you or someone you know is handy enough to make something like this. This was made by one of the new students that came to the flight school. This one's a prototype, but he's working on trying to make it a bit more uh, professional grade, and his contact details are in the description of the show. And for instructors, try to start your students in calm wind conditions. I know that's not always going to be possible. And gradually reduce the assistance on the controls. Ask your students just to focus on one control at a time initially. Use that control isolation technique. And even when you have got to the point where they are using all the controls, keep pushing the student comfort levels. Even short flights in slightly windier conditions can help build their confidence and their skills. Make clearing before turning a strict habit, primacy, reinforce it. You initially get students to aim for hovering in a general area instead of insisting on a specific spot. Recognize the frustration and the fatigue. Make sure you give your student a break, either take the controls or get them to work on something different, maybe pickups and set downs or a different control isolation or go do patterns, mix it up. Watch out for that arm hand position. Look to see if they are not bracing or if they're over gripping. Recognize overcorrections early and guide them back to stability before it gets too out of hand. Encourage your students to anticipate movement rather than react to the drift. And demo things like the pendulum effect, another aerodynamic effects so the student knows what to watch out for. Show errors for things like when you raise the collective, if they don't put the pedal in, how the aircraft's going to twist, etc. And demonstrate those other aerodynamics in action. Give yourself enough margins to be able to take controls and stay close on the controls on these initial stages. Keep it safe. So what tips do you have for learning or teaching hovering? Please send us that feedback and we'll probably read it out or listen to it on the show. Talking to feedback, I've got a feedback here from Bill. This clip was just a small piece of what we cover in episode two of the helicopter training podcast, which was a deep dive on how to hover a helicopter. In the full episode, we walk through a few things like the controls in a hover, what each input does and how, hover aerodynamics. We cover some of the weird interrelated forces at play to help you understand why hovering is so difficult. We're also going to look at the FAA ACS, or Airman Certification Standards. That's the check ride requirements that we'll be looking at specifically for hovering. We'll also go into training exercises and drills to help you get to those standards and beyond. 
as well as tips for both students and instructors. So you can find the full episode right here on this YouTube channel under the podcast tab, or you can listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or whatever your favorite podcast player is. Just search for Helicopter Training Podcast. And don't forget, you can start learning right now on the Helicopter Training Videos YouTube channel with video playlists covering things like ground school subjects, flight maneuvers, as well as following along with a student on every training flight from day one all the way through to check ride. If you haven't already, please click subscribe to get all the latest videos and help support this channel. And then finally, for more information, including articles and quizzes and resources, and how to support this volunteer project, check out our website, helicoptertrainingvideos.com. Thanks for watching. Fly safe.